few, for a few minutes after we just last spoke on starting to show you the process of getting the, the next step of getting this thing cleaned up. You can see, I already see how much freed up space and volume that this, uh, freed up space that the, the, we have now from the volume of the Bogan Villa. And I started at the bottom. Les asked me a while ago why. Well, I started at the bottom because one, if you look in here, this root ball is getting pulled up and over from oh, yeah. the weight, the top heaviness of this tree. Now we can't have that, and we can secure that, and Bougainvillea has a really good tendency to have strong roots and will readapt to this area. But what we're going to do is we're probably either going to run a, a heavy-duty stake here in the back and stake it to it for support and uh, um, structural guidance, or we may even put an eyelet cable uh, attachment to the wall and pull it off the bottom here. But I'm going to pull this up and you can start to see the shape that it's taking, the beauty of this architectural structure of the trunk, and then how we're going to start to shape the canopy here and make it a really focal point for this corner. I mean, I can already see this thing strong in full bloom and underlit at night. I mean, uplit at night here will just be dynamite. And you're being pretty ruthless here. Yeah, well, Bogan Villa is very um, uh, tough, to say the least. And we have to whip this thing into shape, I guess you could say, that uh, we're going to start to show it how we want it to grow. And then just the aggressive nature that Bogan Villa has will become beautiful in this corner. And... Uh, we're going to have a nice new addition to the courtyard here. It's almost like tough love. And you know what this particular plant is capable of and... Yeah, and, and, and you know, a lot of people hold back and are hesitant about trimming. And I guess with my experience, and then just also knowing that I'm benefiting the plant, and in some ways I think the plant may realize that, and um, it's going to start to work with me and work with the way we want it to go and grow. Because we were talking earlier about um, the importance of placement in the design and thinking ahead to the future. Because we may look under here and see the way we pointed out earlier some of the the suckers, as you may say, from other trees or the, like these drake elms right here, you know, that's just wind dispersal. These golden rain trees. Well, we don't need them in here. Well, that doesn't really, I mean, in some ways, that's, they're considered, even though they are trees, they're weeds. Because every plant has a botanical name and uh, has been um, identified, and, but yet, um, the true definition of weed is a plant out of place. So this ligustrum tree here above me could be considered a weed in some people's eyes or thoughts, even though it's a really nice plant. Um, uh, Want to pick the right plant for the right place. What a transformation already. I mean, this is becoming, as you describe, a specimen. Yeah, that's what we want, you know. I mean, I kind of we got a small space here, so why not, you know, create something that is going to be small, but yet adds a positive, interesting backdrop here. Now we're going to hold off for a few minutes on this, and we're going to go to the next step here in the garden, and we're going to talk about moving plant material that, have, that has self-divided. We'll come back and we'll give us a last look at the Spoken Villa here in a few minutes, and we'll see... Um, if we're going to take take the uh, take the time to to st uh, stake it this morning, but we'll get to that later this afternoon.